you know, names like Ontario, Caster Master, and Red Tornado. It makes me feel like a superhero when I head out in the woods, and I've got the lures of justice behind me. We're chasing bobcats this week, and you know what? We're playing for keeps. This is Trapping Time. <laughs> Trapping, an art form that has stood the test of time. Yeah! A heritage built upon hard work, dedication, and pride. Rooted deep with the main goal of conservation, we, as trappers, live this history 365 days a year. With the help of some great friends, Along with the love and support of my family, I'm carrying on that tradition. With all the pitfalls that I may encounter, the rewards more than outweigh the costs. Many of the greatest trappers in history have etched their name in time. This is my story. This is my time. This is trapping time. Trapping Time is brought to you by Vapple at VappleProducts.com Jeb's Chokes at Jeb'sChokes.com Blind Turtle at BlindTurtle.net Smokey's Deer Lures at Smokey'sDeerLore.com Blackwater Hunting Services at BlackwaterHunting.com Southern Ohio Outfitters at SouthernOhioOutfitters.com Poppio Creek Trapping Supply at Poppio Creek Trapping Supply.com Big Game Gut Glove at BigGameGutGlove.com Hunter's Help Technologies at Hunter'sHelp.com Night Owl Lures at NightOwlLures.com Hilltop Outdoor Supply at HilltopOutdoorSupply.com Dakota Line Snares at DakotaLineSnares.com PCS Outdoors at PCSOutdoors.com Duke Trap Company at DukeTraps.com Deep South Trapping Lures at DeepSouthLures.com Webster's Predator Control at shop.websterspredatorcontrol.com Little Whiskey Girl at littlewhiskeygirl.com Wolf Creek Products at wolfcreekproducts.net Southern Snares and Supply at southernsnares.com and Console Energy at consoleenergy.com I really start to focus on cats in late December. You know, the fur's a little bit better, so it's going to bring you a little better fur check. Uh, Pennsylvania, the season doesn't even come in until like the third week, and usually we're deer hunting up until the second week of December. So I wait for all the deer hunters to get out of the woods, so I've got the woods to myself, and I really can focus on these cats. What I did here is I put in a dirt hole set here. I used this chunk of wood as a backing, and I'm trying to take advantage of a bobcat and a coyote's natural desire to use logging roads to hunt. So what I do is I like to get off the edge of the logging road, five to six feet away that way they don't have to a lure doesn't have to have as much calling power because they're going to be within walking distance of it anyways they should be able to smell it wind direction doesn't play a, as much of a vital role in it if it's right beside them so what I done is I, I put a dirt hole in and I know at the end of this ridge there's a big field there's a lot of mice rodents and different things like that and these animals they come back and forth back and forth and a lot of times I'll just punch a little dirt hole in as they're coming along here, that dirt hole catches their eye. I got a piece of backing of some sort, make them work the trap from the front, and they got caught. A really nice eastern bobcat. This time of year in my part of the country, we don't know if it's going to snow one day or be sunny the next. So we've got to take that into consideration when we're making sets. So a lot of times I'll focus on logging roads. This set got worked hard last night. This is one of those instances where you can't catch everyone that comes in. But the beauty about it is he never set the trap off. You can see where this coyote came in and actually started digging around. We've got Smokey's fox and coyote bait, which I can still see it in the hole. And we've got some gland lure right here. This coyote come in to try and dig this out. And probably with the frozen ground, it had him a little worry, worked up. But there's been coyotes all around us. They worked this set like crazy. And we had another set over here that worked as well. We're just going to sprinkle a little more peat moss on top of this. and. I'd say we'll have one here in the morning. If the roads get really, really bad and the snow gets deep, I can still travel back and forth. 
the cats know this too. In this particular set, I'm playing a, taking advantage of this logging road and snagging this cat. When we come back, we're going to remake this set, and don't worry, we've got plenty more Bobcat action. The Big Game Gut Glove is revolutionizing the way big game hunters and trappers are successful in the field. The 26 inch version fits over your elbows and protects you and your expensive hunting clothing from blood or cold water. They're made to fit your hands from extra small to extra large. What I like about them, I can feel with them. Existing products on the market don't give you the feel or protection you need. Wet or dry, the special non-slip grip bonds tightly to whatever you're handling. The Big Game Gut Gloves are reusable so you save money and promote going green. Do you need a blind that will keep you warm on a cold winter day? Do you need a blind that won't blow away on a windy fall afternoon? Do you need a blind that will never wear out? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then you need a Blind Turtle Hard Shell Hunting Blind. This solid one-piece unit is perfect for deer hunters, turkey hunters, archery hunters, and gun hunters. Put it this way, if you hunt, the Blind Turtle is perfect for you. Welcome back. You know, we made this dirt hole set along the edge of this well-maintained access road. Just remember, if you can get down it, so can they. Now we're gonna remake this dirt hole set where I just caught this bobcat at. And as you can see, usually when you catch a cat, they tear the place up. They're always reaching and clawing everywhere. So we're gonna take advantage of that and use that as an attractor. When we put all this back together, I want another animal to know that a bobcat's been here. And we're pretty fortunate, there's actually some droppings here we're going to use them as well and I'm going to show you how to put them in the set to make it just a little more attractive, a little more natural for any incoming predators. When I'm targeting bobcats, I like to focus on travel ways. You know, bobcats travel a lot. What's the easiest way from point A to point B? Your logging roads and these access roads. The trap's still pretty good shape. It's not uh, dirty by any means. If it is a little dirty, just take a little bit of some of this ground litter here. Get you a little bit of dirt, clean it all off. But other than that, that trap's ready to go. We're gonna take and dig our dirt hole back out. Chances are, since we had bait in here, that he's probably not gonna, the bait's probably not been fooled with because he was caught and he's probably more worried about getting out. We're gonna take and open this up, dirt hole up a little bit. Clean this out real good. Now what I like to do is, as you can see, this trap, <clears throat> my trigger and dog and everything are on this side. I want this animal to come through the jaws like this. So. I'm counting on the animal to come down this road and come right in. So what I'm going to do is, I want him to come through the levers. And I'll take some of this dirt that I just cleaned out of this dirt hole and kind of pack the dirt right around the trap. Just to give it a little bit more stability. Now I know we've got a snow front coming in here in two or three days and we're going to get a couple days of rain. So I don't want this trap freezing to the ground. So I don't put it over top of the actual levers themselves. Because if you do that, a lot of times they'll actually freeze in place and will walk over your trap and you won't catch them. Now I use peat moss as my covering. There are a lot of reasons that is if it does rain, it'll shed the water back off. It doesn't absorb as much as dirt does. Now what I like to do is I'll actually shoot a little bit of that down the hole to just make it look more natural. Now like right now, this stuff it's glowing. Here in about three or four hours, time this moisture and stuff kicks in, it'll actually look more like the, the ground litter around it. 
Now this here was my actual tractor and I had sprayed that with bobcat urine. I'm not going to have to do that again. I'm not even going to re-lure this. I can actually still see some of the lure that I put on there. So I want to take a lot of this ground litter. Remember our droppings we saved. We're going to take and throw them up there as well. And all we're going to do is we want to blend this trap in a little bit. We want an animal to think that's another animal has been here. Because bobcats got a bad habit when they hide hide their 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 prey and stuff that they find. If they have too much, they'll hide it to come back. They'll actually kick the leaves up around it. We're gonna kind of st stimulate simulate that. Alrighty. Bobcats can be guided too. So a lot of times I'll just take a lot of guys will use little pebbles, little sticks. I'll take little leaves and just move them around. It looks a lot more natural. And that there is the remake on this dirt hole that we caught this bobcat on along this logging route. And chances are we're going to catch something here in the next day or two because the smell of bobcat urine it just drives animals wild. If you use that little tip there on a remake along the logging road, you'll definitely put more fur in your shed. Perfect area. It's brushy, thick. We've got these logging roads. This is actually the intersection. Three roads come together right here. Perfect. I gotta push it up against this hillside. These cats are gonna work it in from this direction here. You don't have to worry about them coming from the back. I actually faced my trap this direction. I'm using a Duke 175. As you can see, great pad catch. The cat isn't going anywhere. Did a dirt hole, but not your standard three inch, look like a grenade went off dirt hole. I went in, I just drilled, I took my driver, pounded two little dirt holes in. I put some canine hitter and uh, some skillet liquor in there. Two different smells, give them something to work with, but I went with a small hole because these cats, you gotta keep their attention. So when I remit, when I made this set, I used grass, I peat mossed it, and I just put a little bit of grass over top of it. I didn't use my standard dirt that I always use, and um, it worked out perfect. This cat's got some great spots, tickled to death. Knew these cats were in here. Anytime you can take one, it's awesome, awesome stuff. Hey, all you deer hunters, when we come back, we're gonna show you a little set we like to do that takes advantage of a successful deer hunt on the set of the week. The Power Clip by Poppy Oak Creek. Changing the way you trap water. Go check them out at poppyoakcreektrappingsupply.com. Where'd you get all that stuff? DakotaLineSnares.com. I bet it cost you a fortune to ship all that. Nope, not DakotaLineSnares.com. It's $9.95, flat rate. It doesn't matter what you get. Dakota Line Snares and Trapping Products has everything you need right at your fingertips. Our warehouse is packed with trapping supplies you need to be successful on your trap line. And with flat rate shipping of $9.95 on all orders, you get your money's worth. Hey, what are you doing? I'm going to put my order in at DakotaLineSnares.com now. In 2011, the world of shotgun chokes changed forever. Bobby Sears took his Jeb's Head Hunter Precision Choke Tube to the NWTF Wild Turkey Still Target National Championships and brought home the gold. Shortly after, the Game On team got on board. By stacking the shot in front of the wad cup inside the choke tube before it exits your gun barrel, Jeb's can extend your effective range way beyond anything you've ever seen. So don't get worked up about a turkey that's just out of range. Ruin his day with a Jeb's Head Hunter Choke Tube. What do you demand in a quality knife? You want a knife that works as hard as you do. Weeby knives are made for trappers who want efficiency and perfection. The Weeby Elite double-edged fleshing knife has one edge that's ultra sharp, and the other side has just the right edge for pushing fat and meat for perfectly fleshed furs. And don't forget about the Weeby Wicked Sharp, the planet's sharpest skinner. When the blade goes dull, simply snap on a new one, and you're ready to go. Find them at dakotalinesnares.com. A couple years ago, opening day of West Virginia deer season, unfortunately, I wrecked my ATV and broke my leg. You know, I've been pretty fortunate to have taken a deer every year since I've killed my first one, all the way back to when you know, I was 12 years old. But this year it was looking pretty dim that I wasn't going to be able to kill one. So late season muzzler in Ohio, Nate calls me up and says, hey Robbie, I got a deer pattern. I think he was worried that I wasn't going to continue my streak. I think he felt guilty because he was out hunting and killing deer and I was sitting at the house feeling sorry for myself. So I end up, I get my stuff, I go to Ohio, and I was fortunate enough to take a beautiful buck. I had one day to hunt. We shot about a mid-120s, eight-point, um, beautiful deer. 
Shot it with my muzzleloader, got it all on film. Well, Rob, I told you I'd find you one. I didn't swear he'd be a giant, but something respectable. Hey, tell you what, Nate, after the year I'm having with a broken leg and being out not even able to hunt, to get out here late season like this and take one of any caliber. I mean, this is basically what we had our eyes set on, you know, 115, 120. I'll tell you what, when you hunt these sub-zero temperatures like we are today, the later you get, the lower your standards start to be, because you know, especially in your situation where you can't even do anything with What was life. it I told you a little earlier? You know, it's days like this, small bucks get killed. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, in order to repay the favor, Nate had a trap line out at the time. When we gutted the deer out and got it up over the hill, I said, you know what? I said, I got a little trick that might help you put some more fur in your shed. A week ago was muzzleloader season here in Ohio, and Robbie Gilbert killed a nice buck with me, and we needed something to do with the gut pile. So what I did is I gutted the deer right here, and as you can see, there are broken hay bales all the way down the road here. So I took some of that hay, and I piled it over top of the gut pile because your bait can't be visible from the air. And what I did is I bedded three traps around it. There's one over there, you can see my uh, peat moss, it's a little darker, there's one here, and there was one right here. The first couple nights, the coyotes were working it hard, but nothing got hit. There was a deep freeze, and it's just started warming back up. So, as you can see, a red fox has popped into this set. It's a little bit of a variation of a brush pile set. Uh, where Robbie and I will take a, uh, an old carcass, cover it with sticks and grass, and bed a couple of flat sets around it. The exact same thing I did here. I knew that the coyotes had been working this road really, really hard, and I just popped off about five or 10 yards off that road, and like I said, gutted the deer, covered it with a little bit of hay, bedded some traps around it. The foxes, the coyotes, they're gonna circle that until they find a good spot to get their nose in. Well, I've got three traps, and all they've gotta do is find one of those pans, set that trap off, and now I've got a fox. So I'm gonna get this fox out of here, um, the blood that you see in there isn't from this fox. The blood is actually from that gut pile. So I'm going to do my best to reassemble this gut pile set, get that trap reset, and that set from that fox from last night is going to probably bring a bunch more stuff in here. So I can't wait to get this one reset and check it again tomorrow. It's been so wet that my dirt holes are just all filled with water. So it's a nice tip that if you want to go out and check your trap lines every day, which you have to every 24 hours, if you want to be successful, it's not a bad idea to have some flat sets around because the rain's not going to affect them. It's not going to fill up your dirt holes if you got flat sets. So it's a good set to uh, to hopefully catch some fur on a, on a rainy day. Now I got the fox out of the trap. Now the only thing I've done so far is I just reset my trap and sit here. Um, what I want to do now is I want to get that trap bedded. That's the first thing I want to do. So let me get in here. Here's the trap bed. You can actually see the peat moss. It's still pretty dry considering how wet it's been. I'm not too worried about that freezing a lot, but what I am going to do is I'm going to take just a little bit more completely dry peat moss and line the bottom of that trap one more time. So this should bed in there nice and tight, how soft it is. And yeah, it did. So the only thing I'm going to do with this, I'm not going to use a pan cover. I'm going to cover this with peat moss. Peat moss, as we've told you before, doesn't get wet. It acts as an insulation for your trap on the bottom and the top, and it's soft enough to let that pan fall underneath it if you do get some peat moss under there. All right, we've got our trap back in the bed. Now the next thing you want to do is kind of reassemble this gut pile set. Now this is about where the gut pile is. So what I'm going to do, as you can see, this fox has torn it up pretty good. I'm going to try to just yeah, it's still in there. I'm gonna try to just fluff as much of this up as I can to make it look sort of fresh. Because what I wanna do is I want these animals to work the edges. As you can see, there's a trap there, a trap there, and a trap there. Have them work the edges and hopefully get caught. All right, so. Make that look a little bit fresh, pop it up a little bit, and that's it. I mean, when, when you talk about an animal circling this set, there's blood here, there's, there's guts are definitely in, still in there. And what he's gonna do, stick his nose in there, find out what's, what's uh, underneath of the hay, and hopefully get caught just like that red fox did. It's a variation of a brush pile set, 
I got pile set with some hay over it, and as you can see this morning, it worked for me on a red fox. So, let's go on to the next trap. When we come back, I got another money location for trapping bobcats. You take every step to make sure your hunt is safe. Now, take safety to the next level and make sure your field dressing is as safe as the hunt. Hunter's Help Technologies has found a way to make sure your post-hunt responsibilities are as safe as possible. The Easy Gut tool helps you get the chest cavity open without cutting anything but that skin that you want to cut. The trachea cutter does just what it says. You just reach into the chest cavity and punch right through that tough trachea. No more fumbling with a knife to try to avoid cutting yourself in the process. You can find all our products at Hunter'sHelp.com. Who better to get your trapping supplies from than trappers who know what you need in the field? Come on in! PCS Outdoors is one-stop shopping for name brand trapping, predator hunting and calling supplies, shooting and pest control gear at discount prices. A lure for every animal you'd be targeting. PCS Outdoors stands above the competition. Quality Asabo brand snares being made here in Michigan. Go to PCSOutdoors.com for great selection and prices that'll make you want to stock up for your next trapping or outdoor adventure. The trophy moment only lasts a couple of seconds, but the story will be passed on for generations. They only see the glory, not the sacrifice. But I don't wait for my tall tale of glory. I handcraft my journey from start to finish. They don't see what goes on behind closed doors. An epic saga is worth a thousand words. But my story boils down to three. Little Whiskey Girl. Save luck for the weekend hunter. Welcome back. You know, when you're looking for prime bobcat locations, you cannot ignore these fields that run along these streams. You know, even though you've got mink and coon, those bobcats, they like to work those streams as well. On this particular set, I was actually targeting mink and coon, but it didn't surprise me that a bobcat worked his way down the creek and found himself in my set. Now this cat here, this is not your typical bobcat set. I've been, I've been, had a lot of luck with running dirt holes along streams, catching coons, mink, and the occasional bobcat. This is a really nice cat. As you can hear, you can hear the water running behind. The stream bank isn't five feet away. I put a little dirt hole set here, use this log as my backing, and what ends up happening, these cats, they come right along these streams here, hunting for mice and, you know, anything that they could, these streams, they concentrate prey. And this cat came right down through here, and he got caught. Nice hind foot catch. That cat's not going anywhere using a 175, it's double stakes. He's not getting out of this trap. And this is what we're after right here. A very nice late December cat. We'll get this cat out of here and then we'll show you what uh, how to remake this set. Now this cat really, really tore this set up. So, and like I said, he tore the trap up. So we're actually, we pulled the trap. We're gonna go right back in the same trap bed redo it. We've got all this cat sitting around here now, which is just going to key in all these other predators working this streamline. It's going to attract them to this spot and give you a good chance of them working your set. So what we're going to do, we're going to clean out the, the dirt hole again, trap bed, get a new trap set in here, and we're going to be on our way. If you're looking at home and say, boy, that trap's all dirty, I actually pulled this from a pocket set today. I'm just going to reuse it because dirt will not contaminate a trap and it being a water, it's not rusty, they're treated up nice. So I'm just going to plant this trap right back in there. If you're running a, a decent sized line and you don't have excessive amount of traps, you want to make sure you get as much out of the use of the traps you do have. 
There's nothing worse than being mid-season to be boiling traps up. The bait was actually still in the hole. We're not going to relure nothing. There's enough cat set going on around here. These animals are going to work us. So this is a finished set. This is a remake on this dirt hole along this stream bank. We're using this big log here as our backing to control this animal, to bring him in from the front. And hopefully we'll get us another fur bear here in a day or two. When you're targeting bobcats, it's not an exact science. You want to focus on the food and the travel ways. Sometimes it even may take a little bit of experimenting on your own properties. Until next time, we're keeping the tradition alive here on Trapping Time. Remember to set your DVRs every Tuesday at 8.30 on this network channel 266. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and Trapping Time. I personally am going to list every week the conventions, the events we're going to be at. Also, we're going to be posting videos, anything rela trapping related that's going to make you a better trapper and help fuel your trapping addiction. We're trapping bobcats. We're trapping bobcats. I'm getting to keep bobcats. Getting to keep bobcats. Bobcats! <laughs>